Hi guys and welcome to another video and this edition of For Serious Rambling Hikers and Scramblers is entitled Finding My Wainwright's Mojo. Winter is my favourite season for serious rambling, hiking and scrambling and now we're in the spring I realise that I've wasted the winter that we've just uh, been through. Uh, so I am determined to find time in my busy life to get out and complete the Wainwrights this year. Great Mel Fell is one of the uh, remaining eastern fells that I need to tick off. There are two others and I had intended to do uh, all three of them today but with life being the way that it is uh, I have set off way too late in the day for that uh, and it also looks like it's going to be very rainy today so I thought I'd just try and have a relaxing day uh, to tick off this one we'll find somewhere to uh, have some lunch some wild lunching if you like uh, so join me as we work our way up Great Mel Fell and uh, then you can watch me eating some food, which seems to be very, very popular on YouTube. So we're just going to concentrate on Great Mel Fell. I gave up on that uh, track and just hacked my way up the side of the fell. Now, one of the great things about coming to a lesser known hill such as this on Easter uh, uh, Monday is that there's nobody else about. So it's not just a case of me wimping out, okay? I'm a great fan of the laminated Ordnance Survey maps um, and as well as being fantastically durable they're also a great uh, sort of sit mat uh, when you want to have a little rest and I'll film this uh, packing up shot uh, through some uh, long grass because uh, people like that sort of thing don't they? And this is quite a good one it's sort of through two trees that's pretty cool. One of the great things about getting out for a hike is that you uh, can think about things that you don't really have time to in the sort of manicness of day-to-day -day life. And uh, as I've climbed up uh, Great Mail Fell today, I've been thinking about conspiracy theories. And uh, I thought I'd have a little chat with you about those and see, see what you think about them. The algorithm has started delivering some conspiracy theory sort of based content to me for some reason. I think I know why. Uh, I discovered a channel called The Bald Explorer and I guess it came up uh, in my YouTube feed because of the videos were about walking, hiking and sort of history. What I discovered was that this channel which is run by somebody called Richard Vobes uh, has changed in the last year or two and he's not doing that sort of content now he's doing conspiracy theory stuff and uh, it got me thinking about conspiracy theories I remember the days of the reptilian agenda with David Icke for instance and I thought I'd tell you a little bit about uh, Richard's latest conspiracy theories one of Richard Vobes uh, very many uh, conspiracy theories, one of his latest ones, is about what he's calling the 15-minute city. Uh, it's looking pretty menacing. I'm going to go into this, uh, the shelter of this tree. According to Mr. Vobes, there is an initiative emerging in many of the major cities in the UK, whereby the local authority is trying to set up uh, everything so that people have access to all that they need within 15 minutes of where they live. And uh, the bone of contention for conspiracy theorists seems to be that uh, one, nobody has voted for that, but two, it is a step apparently uh, on the route to enslaving us and making sure we don't go anywhere that uh, they, the government, don't want us to uh, go. He believes incidentally that the countryside is gonna be shut down in May on the pretext of uh, avian bird flu. Now, I always struggle with conspiracy theories because they, to me, give the government, the controlling powers, way too much credit for having the ability to plan these cunning things over the decades, over many, many years. Whereas in reality, as we know, they are largely incompetent. And when they do stick their fingers in the till or have extramarital affairs, 
it inevitably comes out, doesn't it? So if they were doing all of these things, uh, I think it would be, uh, we'd find out about it soon enough. I just don't think they have the competence to plan this sort of thing. Right, let's get on with this uh, walk. The summit can't be too far away now. I pushed on to the summit and uh, things got pretty bad, as is often the case on the fells. It, the conditions were much rougher, rainier. So I just did a bit of GoPro filming and then I took a picture of the Summit Cairn for the gang at the uh, Facebook Cairns and Triggs uh, page. Check it out. I've now come back down the hill and uh, I've identified this place here uh, for my lunch stop. It's not particularly stealthy, uh, which I know is a requirement on YouTube videos of this kind. There is a footpath uh, just over there, uh, but uh, it will do. It's also on a bit of a slope, which uh, is not gonna go down well with some of the wild campers uh, out there on YouTube, but uh, I'm happy with it. The um, area that I'm gonna set up is here uh, under this tree. I think that's another uh, no-go type of thing to do, but uh, I'm sure it will be absolutely fine. And whilst it has stopped raining, I think I'm going to use the body bag uh, because it does keep raining on and off. Well, it's nice and snug in here inside the bothy bag. Sometimes people call them body bags. Uh, I think correctly they're both bothies bothy bags so over that end we're using the camera tripod it helps to sort of keep the uh, roof up the idea of these uh, bothy bags is that uh, they're sort of self-supporting uh, so wherever you are if you're in an emergency you can just whip this out your rucksack and uh, you'll have a better chance of survival uh, that's the kitchen over there with lunch and uh, we've got our little window uh, there and that's the breathe hole it's all pretty snug in here and it means that i can have my lunch uh, not worrying about uh, the rain if that uh, returns so without further ado let's have some wild lunching in a bothy bag i've kept things uh, pretty simple for this uh, expedition i've got a flask of coffee and then we've got some of these uh, amazing uh, Fairfield Farm crisps and that's roast rib of beef and they really do taste uh, like those old-fashioned beef flavoured crisps that uh, those of us of a certain vintage will remember and they are completely vegetarian so uh, they're fine for me and then I got uh, this uh, is a uh, rambling hiking sort of favorite from me these uh, granola bars and then another real favorite for me on these adventures is uh, an onion bhaji and uh, this is a new thing that I'm trying it's a uh, nigella pakora well oh the pakora was good I'm now um, tucking into the onion bhaji I'm expecting my likes and subscribers to go through the roof by doing this because people love uh, on YouTube watching people eat food. I'll just make you aware that filming that sequence of me getting inside the body bag did entail me having to get back out of it to then turn the cameras off and then to get back into it. I don't think uh, people who watch, uh, who consume this YouTube content uh, sometimes think about the, the lengths that we go to. Well, seriously though, you guys, do check out the farm shop at T-Bay Motorway Services. You might need to just arrange a little remortgage before you pop in there. It's a bit pricey. I don't know if you can see that there on the camera, but um, I sort of lurched about in the body bag and the tripod sort of fell on my head and uh, that's uh, the result of that. I'm eating the crisps now. Uh, now, uh, in the vein of Blue Peter, I do suggest you don't try this at home. Uh, camping in uh, for your wild lunch in a bothy bag underneath a tree is not advised. They say that uh, branches can fall um, and uh, crush you. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, very mild uh, expedition to Great Mel Fell. It certainly has helped me to regain my mojo for the Wainwrights. Thanks uh, for watching. Like, subscribe. Don't know if we can put that in here. Uh, but uh, I'll see you on...